Hello everybody, I'm Isaac and today I'm going to take you through a Bund shooting star or liquidation trade and this is from Monday the 16th of June. Right, let's jump into it. So, on the left, we've got the daily candlesticks. These are for cash. And you can see up here, here's the shooting star. So this is obviously a rejection candle saying the market doesn't want to go up. And so then the next day, we're looking to play the downside. Now, um, some interesting things about this. This day before, this was ECB. So the market went down, rejected the downside. Then the market opened with a gap higher to make that shooting star day. And so, yeah, there was like an interesting part of this too. Now the next slide will start to see a little bit more detail on that. But what's really key here is just the shape of the shooting star profile. So uh, you can see up here, we've got a ledge. Um, it's also led you here, it's led you down here. Oops, sorry. And so what that's telling us is that the auction and the participation at the highs, like as in the highs, the highs of this bid, were really poor. So that's not a sign that the market wants to keep going. Now if we just go to the next slide, this is the part that I was saying that was interesting about the ECB bid. So the market traded lower on ECB in the US CPIs and then ripped into the afternoon. Now what was interesting about it was just the fact that there was like no rotation or pullback. So there wasn't as much support in this move. So then if the market does fail, it's easier for it to trade back down through that bid. Now, there's one other thing I want to point out here, and that's the shape of this profile. Specifically, actually, the shape of the profile before the breakout. So, if I was to just draw the segment up here, it looks a little bit like this. So it has this nice tailed part here, and then it's cut off like this. And so it's kind of like we have a responsive buyer here, but no responsive seller. And so eventually, when the like few, sorry, it has a responsive seller up here, but no responsive buyer. And so eventually when the buyers do get overcome, the market can break. And so what that, the shape of the upper profile is telling you is that there's a bearish skew. Uh, another interesting thing about it is just where the market made a high. So the highs were made on the C print, which popped the initial balance high, but it didn't test or resolve the volume, sorry, the value area high from the previous day. So that's another sign of weakness. So there are a few things adding up there just to suggest, you know, auction weakness. Um, so this really aligned with the idea of that being a shooting star candle. Okay, so if we just go back through the summary, the information that was uh, available to us for this trade. So the market had aggressively extended bid uh, from the ECB rejection. So that's that bid that we looked at on the 30 minute candlestick chart. Yesterday was a shooting star and it was made with a gap up and a blocky auction. So there's a chance there that some of, you know, like I suppose a lot of people are long the highs. Um, and so that, that positioning now becomes vulnerable. Now the market's opened within range and value but it was A, unable to hold or like bid to the value area high, and B, it formed that balance of the bearish skew. So there was a lot of intraday bearishness about that profile, even though it opened within range. Um, so now the trade idea. So there's this vulnerable positioning and it should result in a high probability liquidation once the market gets below yesterday's low. Now, we're looking at the one minute chart here, and I didn't actually sell it on the way through the low. Um, you can see that it was just like a grind down through there on the one minute. But if we think about the liquidation, well, a liquidation is a really interesting thing because what it's telling us is that all the positioning above here and there is the prior day's low. Um, all this positioning is long, right? And so if the market gets below it, all those longs are forced, well, potentially forced out. Now, with that being the case, the best position for them to exit their trade is here, like against the level. And so this gives you a really good opportunity to sell a retest 
of that level as long as there's absorption. And so that's what I did. Now, one thing to criticize my trading is that while this one here at 80s was yesterday's low, the level just above at 83s, slightly higher than that, was like an absorption point from the, uh, the shooting star day. And so I thought actually maybe that's where the market would hold because that's where the sort of the buyer was holding the lows. Um, and you'll see why that's relevant um, when we look at the size I got on the trade. So anyway, so what we're going to look at is the access to this liquidation on the pullback. Okay, let's jump in to the video. Now this one's going to be quite quick. Um, by quick I mean I've got it at four times the speed and that's just because the bun can sometimes be a little bit slow and this is just going to give us some more feedback as if we were looking at a faster market which sometimes I think helps for understanding. So at times it's going to be a bit quick and at times it'll still be slow. Um, now this pen for some reason isn't working on here but bun is this, um, oops what's going on? Bund is, the Bund is the second ladder from the left. Now, I'm also going to be on the S&P, but please ignore it. That's this, this third from the left. Um, I did, for the first time, trade two markets at once and actually made money out of it, but I think that's a really bad habit, so please ignore what's going on there. Um, I don't want to teach you um, bad habits. Maybe you're good at it, but um, I'm usually not. So, okay, so what we're seeing now is the Bund trading back up to 80s. And I preempted that this, you know, would happen. And so I just started entering a trade. And so you can see there a little bit trade into 80s, I think, but we're getting now, if we look at what's going on, 90 lots, 120 lots trading into 79s. And so the bid, at, uh, sorry, the offer at 79s just keeps reloading. So now I got filled short on two. And so my era, as I was talking about the 83s being interesting, well, I thought actually maybe the market would go up there and so I wanted to get the rest of my size in but that was a mistake as you see. So there was a little bit there absorbed 80s and enough um, bought into it to flip me in on my last lot. Um, and now the market's still you know, holding the offer at, at 80. So that's still reloading into any buying um, and not showing any sign of weakness. Right, so now there's 600 lots sold down into 79s and 115 to 78s. 400 now into 79s, so you can see, sort of between like 78s, 79s, 80s, we're getting some size trader here. Look now, 1800, 2000, like 2500 now at 79s, nearly 3000, and then 28 into 80s. So you got another 444 into 79, so a lot being absorbed there at 79s. But if you think about it, what we've got is like a whole day and then this morning of positioning that's all long above 80s. And so think, well actually how much could really be absorbed here? And well, the answer is quite a lot. And you saw what was another 1400 I think before there was 400 traded at 78s, so now 650. So, or well now, what, 1200. So you can see that there's an awful lot of size going through here. So there really is somebody sitting there um, with like an awful lot to sell, just soaking up any buying that comes along. And so now the markets, well, there's some selling into 77s. So, so far we've only seen, you know, since we got to the highs at like 78, 79s, 80s. And so there's 350 lots, now 500 lots sold at 77s. All right, another 250 lots. So you can see the trade sort of slowed down a little bit. There's what, 700 lots there again at 77s. All right, now there's a little bit of buying. So there was 200 lots at 78, a little bit into 79s. Four lots, 150 lots now, nearly 200 lots in the 79s. Now up to 300. Now you've got to start questioning the sellers again, so you want to see what happens if there's any buying into 80s. 
The market still seems very happy to trade 79s. Two lots into 80s. 100 lots were sold back down to 79s. There's lots of volume on the offer 80s, like 800 or 950 now. So now 79s has taken off it and we've got some size traded into 78. So it's now 1,000 lots into 78s. So you gotta remember we're at four times. So seeing this in real life or in like real time would be a lot slower. But I think this kind of illustrates the point in a way that's almost a bit more fluid and easy to see. But really what we've seen that every time the market comes to this high, the highs, someone's willing to um, soak up any buying. You can see now we've taken 70s offered, 76 offered, 75 offered, right? And now size is going down. See for example there, 464 into 74s and now into 73, 73's taken offered. Now 500 lots into 72, 72 is temporarily taken offered, bid again, but heaps sold there at 72s. So the market's like got this really firm offer now. It's taken all the liquidity from the buyers um, up at the highs, the sellers have totally overwhelmed them, and there's this really strong drive lower. All right, so sort of another, what, 922 lots there trade at 72s. All right, so that's it. So um, you know, that's what I really wanted to, to, to show you, just how, um, you know, how much can be absorbed, remembering that we've got, you know, about one and a half days of positioning up here of longs. So, you know, it can absorb a lot of size, you know, in these prices just below that. And that becomes a really key level because like, as I said, like that's the point where, okay, they've been proven wrong, so now they need to get out. The most opportune price for them to get out is this price, and the market really presented them with a good opportunity to get a lot of, um, you know, a lot of their, out of a lot of their longs. And so what this does is it presents you with a great opportunity to sell here, stop just above, and you can be so tight with the stop. So it presents you with an amazing trade that you can size up on, and then you get this really strong offer. And so you can see, um, like I was really convicted, a held got out of two of the lots there and the last lot down here. Um, so you can see, you know, like this market, and the market was just, oops, sorry, like heavy into the afternoon. You can see sort of each of the, lo the highs is a lower high, and then it's still making lower lows. So, um, yeah, but really what the key thing is here is just understanding how you can execute here, because just the, the amount of like, risk to reward um, you know that you can get here is is insane so now let's just do a quick reflection on how I traded so um, one of the things I did um, or you needed to do here was just to like let the idea mature so you know there are a few ways I thought this could play out so we had that shooting star up here after the ECB bid day and there was this gap so I thought you know it could open down here um, with that positioning already trapped and go, but instead it opened up here. So here you really needed to then, because it's in value, you really need to just let this trade mature. And when you did, you got that like that profile with the skew to the downside. And then you needed to just think about, you know, how you could trade this. And then with well, the trades, obviously it's all about the slow. And I put here as the other point, you need to be your most aggressive, you need to be most aggressive in your entry for the high probability ideas. So I was worried about those three ticks or I thought it might come up there. So, you know, I put some and that was the 83s. And so I um, put the rest of my offers up there. But just for those three ticks, I missed out on taking profit and all of those. So really I should have had it all here. I could have taken a stop, oops, sorry, just above those 83s if I wanted to, um, which would have meant a little bit more risk. But if I think about, you know, I, I was worried about three ticks on a stop um, for whatever it was, 20 ticks of reward. So that, that didn't make sense at all. Um, so there, that's the kind of the self critique on my way of trading. But what's really important here and what we were you know, looking at with the recording was just about the key feature of liquidation. And that's the fact that when the market's offside, when all the positioning is up here, um, and the market's down here, they're all offside, just it really can absorb here and it gives you this amazing asymmetry with your stock really tight here um, for a continuation and a liquidation. 
Um, the other way to do it, obviously, depending on the way the market sits it up with structure, you know, if it forms some kind of block here into the lows and then goes, you can obviously sell here um, again with a stop just above. So the way you access it, you know, can be different each time. But one of the key things about the liquidation is just how tight that you can be um, with your stop because you've got the technicals in this case and the positioning on your side. So there's so much behind this. If you find this video interesting, if you want to go deep into the Axia training method and how a trading team of seven figure traders develop setups and strategies and how they learn to build the most profitable trades across all market environments, then join me in this workshop. Now in this workshop, you're going to learn three powerful steps we use to train all our traders on both our London and our Poland trading desks to help build incredible levels of consistency. How to predictably understand which setups work and which don't. You're going to learn our two main strategies for how we perfect our trade timing before we enter every single trade. You're going to learn the VEL concept, which is our one and only technique we use to leverage our largest trades. You'll also learn how to avoid trading setups that don't work, how to avoid those large losses, and our main method we use to identify them that saves our traders significant amounts of capital. Finally, you will learn how our traders use the power of network learning to find market patterns quicker than ever before, so you shortcut that learning curve. In the workshop, we want to program your awareness of elite performance, to program your ability to choose the right setups, and program your ability to be a consistent trader. So the trades that you execute become more simple and clearer. And I can tell you this, you'll never see the markets the same again. You'll never look at the markets with a narrow view of getting lost in all the noise and confusion. You'll take your first step towards a deep edge market awareness. I cannot wait for you to join me in this workshop. And I think you're in for a massive paradigm shift in your understanding of how to develop as a trader. So join me by clicking on the top right hand corner of the screen and sign up for this powerful training workshop or visit EliteTraderWorkshop.com.